All right, guys, I've got a little job to do. This is for my brother Andy. He um, he designs small boilers. Um, this is a, uh, a Ransom Sims and Jeffries portable engine that he's uh, he's doing the boiler for 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 a chap in the state. Uh, this is what I term five inch scale. So it's a nice size boiler. This one. This is going to be done in duplex, which is the two thousand series stainless. Um, and there's a number of machining components that need to go on these boilers. So. He's, uh, he's in the making a lot of these sorts of boilers. He's got a, a, another seven and a quarter on the go. And uh, he's got another five inch gauge like on the go as well. But uh, I'm gonna focus on this one today. I'm gonna start making up some of the boiler furniture or boiler fittings. Um, first job I've got to do is uh, we've got this plate that houses the water pump on the side of the boiler. And it's got this large radius that needs to be machined in it. So we're gonna set that up and uh, we'll just go through machining out that radius and show you how we go about setting up. I've got lots of stays and I've got lots of other little bits and pieces. The safety valve bushes, they're an offset machine. We might uh, we might set up and show uh, show that one as we get it done. We've got the expansion drift for the uh, for the tubes. Um, I've got to do uh, all the boring for the um, for the tube uh, tubes into this one as well. And that's the GA, the whole design, but. Um, I'll quickly show you the plate that we've got set up for this one here. So all the stock's been um, laser cut out at Sandvik. So uh, these ones here, we've just got to lick these out. He's, he's put the, the back head and the uh, and the tube plate together, just uh, stitch them together and uh, we'll set them up as a date and we'll start, uh, we'll start boring all those through and get them all true. He's looked at the laser finishes on these and honestly, you could have left them the way they were, I reckon, but we'll bore them out, but that's uh, another operation down the track. As I said today, we'll focus on doing this uh, this big arc radius. Now, 2000 series or duplex stainless is, is pretty gnarly stuff to machine. Uh, it's pretty hard on tap, so we've got to look at our tapping sizes so we don't uh, we don't break everything off under the sun. All right, we'll come to the mill and we'll show you the setup and uh, how we're going about to set up that uh, that radius to get that that finish through. All right, first thing we need to do is get a zero point on the top of the plate. It's uh, an eight mil thick plate. And uh, we need to get a center, so we'll, we'll come up either side here with the uh, with the horizontal head, and uh, we'll get that centralized up as well. set up now we'll set up with the uh, with the boring head and we'll set a radius on that at uh, 71 millimeters and we've just got to lick out to the sides of the plate that's all all right we'll come back when we've got that uh, that set up organized right so this is the setup um i've just got this tool cutting cool tool just touching the top of this we're at exactly 71.045 millimeters off center so we'll just bring the table up to cut our depth. Um, I don't have any carbide cutters, well no carbide cutters that I can find that I've been using here so I'm going to have to try high speed steel and we'll just see how we go, how this performs. Alright, let's get into it. Absolutely destroyed that tip there. All right, let's see if I can find some carbide maybe that I can uh, machine down to go in there. All right, we'll have a look around. All right, my lucky day. I found a uh, little bit of um, carbide that I can get in there. A little uh, braised on bit of carbide onto a, onto a square and it does fit. I actually found a packet of it that I didn't know I had, so imagine what you can find when you start having a bit of a dig around. All right, let's uh, have a go and see how this carbide performs. We, we totally destroyed the uh, high-speed steel on this, so hopefully this is going to go a bit better for us. All 
Well, that's chalk and cheese. That's beautiful. All right, I'll finish that through. We'll bring you back when we're sort of getting towards the uh, the last of the cuts, but um, yeah, it's working out nicely. All right, I'll see you soon. Righto, guys, while well, we totally destroyed that carbide bit. So I've ground up another one. I've put a bit more of a radius on the tip on this one. We'll slow it down and we'll just take it a little bit easier. There's quite a bit of overhang on there. I've had to really grind a fairly big relief on that so that it clears on the radius on the back edge as it uh, comes around. All right, let's set it up and we'll see how we go with this one. All right, guys, I'm about halfway down the cut again and this tip is <laughs> getting destroyed. Um, I only get about halfway down, then I've got to regrind it. I've tried all sorts of things, changing the feed rate, changing the speeds, but uh, nothing's really helping out. So we're going to look at another method to try and cut this radius. And uh, I'm going to use my 50 millimeter insert tool cutter. And we're going to kick that on an 18 degree angle. So I've laid this out on uh, on Inventor, projected the shapes, and uh, it's not a true curve, but it's within 0.03 of a millimeter. So I think we'll be fairly safe with that to go on a bit of um, a bit of pipe. All right. The only thing I don't like doing is I've got to adjust my head, which means I've got to retram it again when I'm finished. But since I've got a couple of these to do. I think that might be a bit quicker. We'll give it a go and we'll see what happens anyway. All right, guys, the way that I angle my head is I've got my little Wixby digital level. So I zero that up on my table. And then we're going to mount that onto the side of the quill. Like so. And then we're going to angle that around at the moment. As you see, it's 90 degrees. So I'll undo the head. We'll rotate it around the 18 degrees. And... Uh, We'll see how we go. All right, so we've got our head angled over at the uh, 18 degrees, 108. We'll put the, uh, the cutter in, and we'll show you the geometry that we've had to work on to create that, uh, that curve. Right, so one of the things we need to allow for in the geometry when we're laying this out is the fact that, although this is 50 mil in OD, well, it's just shy of that, the actual cutting position is going to be inboard from that because of the radius that we have on the cutter. So because we're just going to be skimming here, I've taken the radius into consideration. I've taken a millimetre off the diameter, and we'll see how close we are with that. Um, I know what my depth has got to be when I'm out to these wings here. So we can check that and uh, see if we're within a, uh, a ball's roar of what we need to be. But uh, we should be pretty right with this. All right, I'm just going to take this very slow. These, uh, these tips are pretty stuffed. They're pretty, uh, pretty nailed up, but give me a bit of an idea of how this is going to shape out before I, uh, I turn them over and uh, put some new uh, new cutting edges in. So I've zeroed the uh, the cutter off and we've only got to drop down 1.6 of a mil. But I'll run this through and just see how it uh, lines up with the profile of what we've already done. Now I may have to jigger it backwards and forwards a bit to get it on centre because my turret, when I've rotated this around, may not be square to the table, which which most of the time doesn't matter. But um, when you do angle the head around, it may kick back a little bit. So I'll just have to see how that marries up. And it looks like it is a little bit out, but we'll see. <laughs> Totally different experience. Um, no problems with that at all. No problems at all. Cuts through it like that.
it's exactly 1.6 now, and that has, oh, yeah, it's down to a feather edge there. I might just give it one more clean up lick back this way, and uh, that'll do it. That's it, done. That's a very nice surface finish on that too. We'll, we'll get this out and, uh, and we'll show you. All right, guys, that's our finished part. You can see the, the profile that we've created up in there. Very, very nice surface finish, even though we had some, um, some pretty poor cutting uh, edges there. And that's worked out exactly as per the dimensions. And uh, it uh, cleaned up perfectly on the edges. So very happy with that. So what was giving us an absolute headache to try and cut with a single point cutter off the um, off the boring head ended up becoming a no more than a 10 minute job to finish out and uh, very pleased with the result so that's going to sit on a bit of um, nominal bore 125 mil of four, uh, or five inch pipe and uh, it's quite beautiful all right guys just something a little bit different that i'd quickly show you and uh, get on with the other uh, parts of this loco boiler all right guys We'll catch you soon. Alright guys, I just thought I'd quickly show you how we came up with that 18 degrees. And you can do this uh, iteratively on your milling machine just by adjusting the head and using a bit of scrap stock until you get the radius and the depth working out spot on for yourself. In this particular case I've just done it in the uh, Inventor program. So uh, I've created my raw stock which is uh, 30 by 8, extruded that through. I've created a second sketch plane at an angle. And I've created a third sketch plane, which is going to be the profile of my cutter. So I've drawn the circumference of my cutter minus the radius of the tips. And I've been able to project that shape onto this sketch plane. And that gives me the true cutting shape of my cutter as it goes through. I've then been able to extrude cut through that stock to create our shape. And the beauty of this is that I can sit there and I can adjust my angle make it 40 degrees we'll update that and you'll see the profile totally changes let's go to five degrees update that and once again you see the profile totally changes so you can do this very very quickly come up the angle that you need you know exactly what you're going to be setting your machine up to I have already cut the uh, the uh, holes and tapped the uh, M5s into this and I can tell you high speed steel drills just get burnt out totally. They won't even touch this stuff so I've had to go for the cobalts to get through this and be very very careful with my taps. I've already broken one tap off in this. It's, it's like machining hard gumby bears. It is shocking shocking stuff to machine. So for me this is going to be a uh, a real learning curve machine this uh, duplex stainless steel uh, not very comfortable with it at the moment and uh, I've got a lot of uh, a lot more machine to be done to uh, make up that boiler furniture those uh, those add-ons under the boiler all right guys I uh, hope you found that interesting and we'll catch up with you soon cheers just before I go guys there's an addendum to what we've done as I said I had to get my um, spindle retrammed in again and once again, I used a little Wixby on the side of the, uh, the spindle to get it as close as I can. And that got it within five thou. Uh, from there, I can then um, adjust the tramming to get it right. But uh, I use a, an old inner ring off a tapered roller bearing set. Uh, this is perfectly ground, uh, spot on um, and flat. And uh, I use that as my, my, uh, my surface to clock up to so bang on zero zero in this direction and in this direction so happy with that all right guys we'll see you soon